Hi everybody and welcome to a beautiful Saturday morning here at Turtle Beach in Thailand in uh, the province of Pang A. I'll try and restrict the wobbling around of the camera. Uh, the, the table I've got here is an old IKEA table that I've had about three different uh, bench tops on and it's sort of uh, getting a bit wobbly as I am. But really great to have you with us <clears throat> to have a look at our topic today which is Thailand in transition. I mean it's a very broad topic and obviously, the world is in transition continually, and perhaps uh, no more obviously than at the moment with some of the, the world conflicts. But here in Thailand, I think a lot of the Thailand that we have uh, been used to over the past 20 years is quite suddenly changing. And I thought it would be interesting to have a look at some of the areas I see where those changes are quite clear and also get your thoughts because uh, the show is always yours. So we, we do look forward to hearing your comments about this and I sort of isolated it into a few very sort of broad areas and uh, you could call these, I mean, uh, this is my note paper, the back of uh, letters as another one of the fishing boats heads out for, uh, for the morning. The boats have been uh, up on the beach for the past two or three days because they haven't been allowed out to, to sea to go fishing, even though there's been, well, very, very little weather indeed. But uh, the Marine Department, in their infinite wisdom, have thought that uh, it was best for them to stay ashore because there might be some storms around, which in this particular instance uh, never happened. So politics, I think there has been a sea change in the politics, and I'll get to these thoughts a bit later. Uh, tourism, quite obviously, there's a change in the tourism mix and, well, just the sheer number of tourists. Uh, the military, I also think, uh, is changing in its dominance in Thai politics, I think, is changing quite quickly as well. Uh, and the weather, Obviously, there has been some, uh, some quite clear changes in weather around the world over the last few years. I'm not uh, into conspiracy theories. I'm not really into saying that it is uh, because of man-made changes, although the evidence is there to say that that has had a profound effect. But uh, I'm not a climatologist, but I can have a look at the statistics and see that there have been some changes, but I'm speaking today about more local changes that uh, I can point to and say, yep, there has been some changes, and uh, particularly this year. And then there's been, well, some quite clear social changes that uh, we probably need to recognise. Some of those uh, have been announced over the past week, and we should just acknowledge the fact that they're happening and perhaps ponder what changes they may make to the Thailand that we've been used to for so long. So that's a bit of a, uh, a broad coverage of what we're going to have a talk about today. And of course, I do look forward to your comments on this. Uh, part of this, I suppose, might be in relation to a topic that Steve Ross with an E had on his channel yesterday and <clears throat> that we'll be addressing also in tomorrow's Grumpy Old Men program. And that was about uh, living an authentic life here in Thailand, what that might be, whether it's even important to, to define it, and if it's even important to live an authentic life here in Thailand, uh, even if we can define it. So I think that, uh, that sort of comes into the mix as well. But I've got all the usual, we've got a hands, we've got uh, Brett Tor Pedersen. Good morning uh, from Hua Hin. Thank you very much for joining us. Hell to the usual suspects. I think it should be hello from Reread. Uh, we've got Daryl. Uh, who else we've got? We've got so many people here this morning. The chairman. Morning, everyone. A very pleasant and cool weather in Bangkok. Been quite a lot of rain there during the last week. Indeed, <clears throat> been a lot of rain in Pattaya. Good morning if you're from Pattaya. We've had guests here during the week, and uh, they were from Pattaya, and uh, they've cleaner there in the background uh, they've enjoyed perfect weather here at Turtle Beach I'm not sure what they've gone back to a question from the chairman we'll get to this one straight away hi Tim are there any stats on what market uh, share Chinese auto manufacturers have of the Thai car market increasingly po popular you see them everywhere oh you're absolutely right uh, particularly things like uh, the Great Wall Motors Haval 
uh, which I was looking at at one stage. They've also got the Aura Good Cat, and they're about to come out with a thing called the Tank, which basically is um, a sort of a on-road, four-wheel drive type uh, Nissan Patrol sort of vehicle, but very swish, and I think it's going to shake things up. It comes in a, uh, a petrol-only version, and it comes in a hybrid version as well. I think it's going to market for about one point. 5 million or something, but a very impressive looking car from the inside. From the outside, it sort of looks very boxy and almost Hummer-like. Uh, but what other brands? There's, of course, the BYD. They've got uh, three models out now, including a new one called Seal, which is a beautiful coupe, uh, a bit of a Tesla. There's a Haval just going past now. Uh, a bit of a, a Tesla 3 were well, maybe competitor, certainly a competitor in price, and from all the reviews, it's getting very, very good reviews uh, comparing it to the, uh, the the Tesla Three. Anyway, we could go on about Chinese cars forever, uh, but, but they are proving to be very popular here in Thailand. And uh, guess how many fires they've had with Chinese EVs here in Thailand? One. Uh, and it was because it was caught in um, some other flame. Uh, anyway, I'm sure people have got their own thoughts about uh, EVs exploding. Uh, there has been more conventional petrol engines catching fire than EVs, just so you know. Uh, not many cars catch fire, by the way. You can usually buy a car and expect to get through the entire life of the car without it catching fire. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, what up, you crazy Tim fan? Says Brett Border. Hello from the Great White North, Vancouver Island. You know, out of all the places I'd like to go in the world, Vancouver is one of those places. Uh, when I was very young, in fact, uh, I was six years old going on a boat from Melbourne to Southampton via Tahiti and the Pacific and the Panama Canal. I'm sort of rerouting myself um, all the way to Southampton, England. It was about an eight week journey. And uh, we had we met some friends, well, friends of my parents, who lived in Vancouver. I'd really like to know what they're doing these days. They're na they were called the Olinix. If anybody in Vancouver, particularly um, the gentleman who was, I was just talking to, Brett Board, if you know the Olinix, They'd be well into their 70s or 80s now, but I'd, I don't know, I'd love to reconnect with them because I remember my parents enjoyed their company. They were very kind to me, and I think they came and stayed with my parents at some stage in the years after. So uh, things you sort of remember, but I'd like to go to Vancouver. Uh, okay, and thank you very much to uh, a bit of an early starter. What have I got to do? Click here. Kevin Martin. Now, I don't know where you're from, Kevin, but thank you very much. Uh, perhaps it looks like you're from the, uh, the US, but I really appreciate your, uh, your kind uh, donation to the program. It's much appreciated. And I should say hello to Paul. Paul, who I met next door, where they've set up a bit of a, um, I suppose you'd call it a pop-up Thai restaurant. Uh, Mama? Mama, mama noodles with vegetables and chicken or pork, 50 baht. Uh, Pad CU, 50 baht. A whole lot of other Thai dishes, which are 40 to 70 baht. So a really authentic uh, Thai local, well, nearly feet in the sand uh, pop-up, which is just next door. I think they might be moving soon, but I ran into Paul and his friend yesterday, and he came over to say hello to me, and uh, he was dropping into Turtle Beach just to sort of see what was happening here and uh, hopefully you enjoy your few days here. And before we sort of get on to the Thailand in transition, we'd just like to say hello to Guzzy, Jack, uh, who else we got? Uh, Keo, good morning from Bangkok. From Dallas, we've got uh, Brad Metesky. Uh, great to have you with us from Dallas. I've got relatives in Texas. And I've been watching, uh, binge watching, so has Steve, by the way, uh, Young Sheldon, which is a program, uh, which is a sort of a, a prequel to the Big Bang Theory, which was a very popular show for years. And uh, we've both been watching that, but they're all got you know, strong Texan accents. So that's been uh, rubbing off on us a bit, I think. 
Uh, Mike says, good morning, Tim. I read that the king has not named an heir to the throne. Who would decide who becomes the new king or queen? Uh, Mike, that's a very good question. And um, th there is actually a, a privy council, which is nominated, I think, partly by the government and also by uh, the, the monarch. And they uh, can give advice, but the ultimate decision is usually left up to the, uh, the reigning monarch. Now, uh, the, <laughs> it's very, very complicated at the moment, and it's been complicated by the uh, current, I'm having to choose my words carefully here, the current absence of the king's eldest daughter, who's been <clears throat> minimum in a coma since December last year. And um, I can't really say much more than that, but uh, she's sort of out of the picture. And uh, the eldest daughter under the 1923 Act uh, of Succession would be able to ascend the throne and she would be the Queen of Thailand, but uh, she won't be able to assume that position. There is currently a, a young crown prince uh, who has been doing a lot of his studies in Germany. A lot of people around early this morning whizzing up and down the road. Uh, now, he um, has some uh, of his own challenges and may not be able to assume the position of a, a monarch in the future. Uh, and you would note that there has been the return of two of the king's um, uh, eldest sons, who have uh, been living in the United States for the past, I think, nearly 20 years, and their return to Thailand uh, two or three months ago, uh, quite high profile, and their, uh, their mov movement around and the people they were meeting um, seemed to, to have a lot of royal patronage behind it, even though it wasn't an official visit as such. So... Um, it may be that we're seeing, again, speaking about transitions, some changes in the way that uh, the next monarch may eventuate in Thailand. But of course, we can only say for now, uh, long live the king. Uh, because he's currently, I don't know if I really answered your question, but I was trying to skirt around a couple of issues. Uh, Tim has to show up before I hit like. I'm here. What do you mean? So yes, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. I think we're at 27 and a half thousand. Subscribers have been a bit uh, thin on the ground over the past three weeks. Uh, October has been a very difficult month for a lot of YouTubers and the media generally. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the numbers when they come out uh, for all the websites and they come out uh, usually on the seventh day of the next month. I think we'll see a drop in media. I don't know if the media cycle, there just hasn't been that many stories that have attracted the attention um, for the readers of English-speaking media in Thailand. I'm pretty sure we'll see a, a quite a, a considerable drop during October. September and October uh, are usually the quietest months for media in Thailand, and that perhaps uh, also represents the quietest months for tourism by Western tourists in Thailand. But obviously that's gonna to start to ramp up as the weather starts to move into high season mode. Will Thailand stop blocking porn on the internet? Robbie, you're not looking very hard. Uh, there is plenty of porn on the internet. Um, so I'm told by some friends, you won't have any problems finding porn on the internet. There are some websites that uh, you can't use, but there are plenty of others. So uh, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, Robbie, yeah, that's not really a huge concern. Or you can also use a VPN or something like that. I've never really waded down that particular uh, canal, but I think if you use a VPN, you can get around the, uh, the Thai blocking of websites and things. I want to build a steam powered tuk-tuk, says Hans. Why? Um, you can get a petrol driven one that makes a whole lot of noise. What, they're sort of three cylinder? Uh, yeah, I, I'm figuring that the steam engine might actually be bigger than the tuk tuk to, uh, to get the same amount of power. You might like to tell us why. Uh, just uh, going through here, we've got John Swift. 
who says, I return back to Thailand Wednesday after seven days in the UK. I'm seeing a big change month on month in the UK. Shops closed, prices much higher, not much enjoyment either. Pubs closed or open two or three days weekly. Thank you, John, for that, uh, that input. Uh, Anders says there are quite a few more petrol cars in Thailand than EVs. Well, currently, of course, because they've been around a lot longer. So maybe not the best argument to say there's been more petrol cars catching fire. Well, yes, uh, car batteries are a problem regardless of make. Uh, Anders, that has uh, changed very, very quickly. Of course, with uh, EVs being the new kid on the block, the amount of technology and evolution and change is very, very quick at the moment, whereas uh, in some ways petrol engines have sort of um, evolved to uh, th th their highest point and don't have a lot more room for improvement, whereas electric vehicles uh, have a whole lot more scope for improvement in the future. Uh, clearly, they're the, they're the future, exactly how that will manifest itself in different markets around the world and how a lot of the car makers who have been making petrol cars and diesel cars in the past, how they're going to react to it is going to be interesting to see. But I think there's little argument that uh, the Chinese have been leading the way in electric vehicle technology and, of course, propelled by the popularity of the, uh, the Teslas as well. How will the Teslas react to this competition from the Chinese EV car makers as well. Uh, okay, I won't be buying an EV, maybe a hybrid, says Hans. Thank you very much. Uh, look, um, because I do rent out my old Honda, can I turn this around without everything going completely crazy? There it is parked out the front there, uh, looking out at the beach. Uh, but because I rent that out quite often these days, particularly to people who come and stay at the beach house, um, I've got the Mercedes, which I really use just for picking people up uh, at the airport. I don't want to be using it as a daily car. So I may need a new car, and if I get one, it will certainly be an EV. Um, looking currently, the BYD Seal and the MG4 are the two. MG, can you believe buying an MG? Uh, made in China these days. But gee, they're, uh, they're both really nice looking cars for their price point. And... Uh, yeah, they both go like, can I say shit off a shovel? They both go very fast. They've both got very high performance. Stefan says, problem with the hybrids is that you get the best of both worlds, uh, but also the worst still have to maintain a combustion engine. Uh, okay, so we've got Frank in Thailand. Hopefully we're not going to have any fights today. Frank, hands uh, talking to hands, uh, will accept flat tyre, not much other roadside maintenance is needed. Talking about EVs, uh, people need to evolve to the new market. Travel incoming, I'm never going to give up my mighty V8, says travel incoming. The only V8, V8 vehicle I ever drove was um, a Range Rover. I had a 1976 Range Rover, had it for about four or five years, loved it to death. Um, very, very comfortable, very thirsty on petrol, but I loved the sound of the V8. And it was uh, yeah, a lovely car to drive around, but, but totally impractical for what I needed it for anyway. John's Journey, hi from Amsterdam. Uh, I'm not sure if you come from Amsterdam or if you're visiting there, but thank you for joining us. From Mauritius, we've got Arif. Uh, we've also got uh, Starman Jack from Byron Bay in Australia. Now, there's a very nice part of the world indeed. Hi from Munich, says Alpha Bravo. And Tom Orr or says, good morning. Uh, Celine, good morning from Nonterbury, uh, where it does not feel cool. John's journey, busy booking things now. Okay, so uh, we will get to more of your comments soon, but I wanted to talk about this Thailand in transition topic because I think it's really important for us to understand where Thailand is uh, g going in terms of a lot of things, and these questions keep on popping up. Uh, Wilco, g'day Tim, how far are you from Phuket Airport now compared to travelling from the Patong area to the airport? Oh, I'm a lot closer to the Phuket Airport than Patong, both in terms of <clears throat> kilometres and time. It takes me half an hour to get from the beach houses to the Phuket Airport. Of course, there's a lot less traffic, four-lane highway all the way, 
really nice drive. Uh, to go from the airport to Patong is 45 minutes to an hour uh, through a lot of traffic these days. Robbie says, loved my Range Rover as well. Anyway, let's get on to this. Have, let's have a look at tourism, the way it's changed in Thailand over the years. And uh, we'll start with this. Um, these are figures from Wikipedia. And we can have a look at uh, 2005, where we had 11.5 million visitors coming to Thailand. Well, 2005, that was a lot. But if we have a look, we can see that by 2019, which was the last full year of tourism before this year, and uh, these numbers, of course, this year will be down as tourism is slowly recovering. But uh, we can see that in 2019, we had 39 point, well, 39.8 million. Now, that's three or four times the amount of tourists just in nearly uh, 14 or 15 years. It looks a bit more stark if you look at this graph and it shows that back in 1995 there were 4.5 million tourists coming to Thailand compared to 39.7 million in 2019. That graph really going just in one direction. This year they think the number will be around about 25 million tourists and a full recovery maybe next year, the year after. There are so many things in play nobody knows but certainly the tourism has recovered. The other thing that's important to note is where these tourists are coming from and we note here in 2012 the the highest feeder markets were well the Chinese were the highest feeder market back then in uh, 2012 and then we've got Malaysia, Japan, Russia, South Korea, India, Laos, Australia and the UK in the top 10. So the thing I think we need to note here is that these uh, Asian markets have already ha have always figured quite highly in Thai tourism, uh, but visitations from say the UK, Australia, or the US have been quite consistent over the past twenty or thirty years. But the number of tourists coming from these closer feeder markets, uh, India, South Korea, uh, Hong Kong, China, Japan. They've been growing much, much faster and uh, really are the reason the number of tourists has increased so much. Now we go to 2019 with the highest number of tourists and that year had 10 point, nearly 11 million tourists. So it had increased fivefold in just uh, seven years, fivefold for the Chinese. But at the same time, the number of uh, British and UK, same thing, uh, UK, American and Australian tourists had remained consistent. And you can also see that uh, Malaysia, India, South Korea, Laos, Japan, Russia, United States, Singapore and Vietnam, they're in the top 10 in 2019. So still the highest number of tourists by far coming from those close short haul markets. And then we jump to 2023. Where are they coming from this year? Well, the highest feeder market is Malaysia. A lot of those people coming across the uh, southern border, a lot of them for uh, weekend visits, some of them for day trades. And then we've got uh, the Chinese who are starting to return in numbers, but way down on the numbers they used to be here in 2019. And a full recovery of Chinese tourism may be a few years off. There's a lot of negative publicity in Chinese social media about Thailand at the moment. And uh, Indians and Russians, of course, have become uh, the, the biggest new feeder markets over the past 12 months. And uh, Vietnam, Singapore, United States. So a lot of US citizens coming back to Thailand at the moment. And uh, then Laos and Hong Kong in that top 10. So that's uh, the way that the tourism market has changed in just sheer numbers. And also with the, 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 the mix of tourists. Big changes. And those changes then make the way that the Thai tourism operators change or evolve to... Uh, maintain them and to handle them and to offer them uh, food, menus, different tours, because the different nationalities uh, want to do different things. Uh, for example, a lot of these Asian tourists don't want to sit in a bar. So people saying, oh, they don't go to the bars. Well, 
big deal. Uh, that's just their decision. They want to go on tours. They want to visit islands. They want to do different things. So the fact that they're not going to bars isn't a bad thing. It's just that they want to do different things and spend their money in different ways. So that's number one as far as, uh, I think, a big transition. And as to how it's going to continue that transition into uh, the next 12 months, well, I spoke to my... um, deep throat in the tourism market on Phuket and uh, he has advised me that the bookings for the upcoming high season are not that strong. They're okay but they're certainly not as high as they were last year and uh, there'll have to be a big kick along if they're going to really start uh, surging and showing a a strong dominance for the uh, the high season this year. Uh, As to where they're coming from, Well, uh, they're sort of coming from, uh, not surprisingly, Russia and the Chinese. And this is only in Phuket, by the way. But uh, yes, this uh, huge surge of tourism and getting back to the 2019 numbers, it's probably not going to happen this uh, high season from uh, my deep throat source. So uh, let's see what you're saying about that. Uh, Just winding back a bit. Uh, If anywhere needs transition, says Tom, or it's Thailand. I'm starting to feel sorry for the new government. There has been so much neglect of the country and its people over the past 10 years. Interesting perspective. Yes, we've had a steady hand on the tiller, but not necessarily uh, much change. And certainly the GDP of Thailand, I think, has been increasing at an average of only 1.8% over the past 10 years. And uh, it's, Thailand has fallen behind some of its neighbours during that period. But I think you could say that the new government has hit the ground running and is uh, moving in all sorts of directions to try and increase uh, business and investment here in Thailand. But thanks for your comment, Tom. Um, OK, by you, Tom, on the loose again. I'm watching this with great interest as I've been disturbed at Thai events since I noticed they were knocking down old stuff as fast as they could. Um, Where's that happening? Please tell me uh, where they're knocking down old stuff. I mean, you can still drive around Phuket, for example, and I'm sorry to keep on harping about that. I used to live there. I suppose I can speak about it with some authority and I visit there maybe once a week. But there's still a lot of empty shops and still a lot of empty shop houses and even if uh, the lights are on down below usually there's nobody living upstairs at the moment so uh, yeah I'm not sure which places you're talking about where a lot of stuff's been knocking down that's a lot of tourism which I could take part says Shano Traveller I like the marriage because I have okay we're talking about visas there Uh, okay so this is uh, interesting I do believe the costs of flights do play a part says KJ as I'm spitting all over the place. Uh, The flight tickets for regional flights are still expensive compared to pre-COVID. Yeah, sure. Uh, Domestic tourism has dropped as well. And that's, uh, even though a lot of the flights have returned, in some cases they are more expensive. You can still get a good budget price, but they're not as consistent as they used to be before COVID. And as far as international flights are concerned, yeah, there's certainly... um, I don't know, I'm just making a random guess, but I'm guessing the average flight into Thailand at the moment may be one and a half to two times the cost pre-COVID. Interested in your impressions on that. But uh, let's move from um, the, uh, the, the tourism evolution to politics. And uh, look, I think all we can do is look at the last election and see that there was obviously a bit of a sea change, a huge swing to a progressive new government. And uh, the Move Forward Party did get the highest number of primary votes. Now, that didn't evolve into um, them taking the government because the Constitution allowed for uh, other parties to get together and form a coalition. And they were able to form a working coalition that was accepted by the Senate, all perfectly legal and covered in the 2017 Constitution, whether you like it or not. And, well, gee, in the last two months anyway, there seems to be um, maybe a honeymoon period. But the Conservatives and the old uh, army hacks 
they're getting along quite well, it seems, with uh, the new government, uh, which is led by Per Tai, which were always the progressive government in the past, perhaps now seen as more centrist as the Move Forward Party have taken over that sort of progressive role. And with some of the things that are being uh, proposed, uh, the opposition, which is mostly the Move Forward Party, have been saying, well, thumbs up to the government, we'll support you in that particular legislation. And some of the old conservatives it's currently in the coalition, they're also saying, oh, yeah, we'll support you as well. So it may be a honeymoon period, but there certainly seems to be a lot more consensus in Thai politics at the moment and general support uh, for this new prime minister who is certainly travelling. Uh, <laughs> you can't accuse him of not putting in the work. And yes, he's shaking hands with a whole lot of people. Some people are not happy with the handshakers. Again, a topic we'll cover tomorrow in Grumpy Old Men. But uh, yes, he certainly hit the ground running. Brett Border, thank you very, very much for uh, your kind support of the program. And he says, for the cats, per usual, or whatever, as I know, they're already well cared for. Actually, we've run out of food for the cats. Is, are there any around here? They were lurking around a bit early, but they've got more important things to do. I'll send them out later to, uh, to wash the car. But they've settled in very well. Thanks, Brett, and appreciate your support. Uh, John Swift is talking about flights. My fly five flights to Thailand per year from the UK have increased from 425 to 950 uh, pounds, I'm assuming. Same airline, airport tax from 195 during COVID to 390 now. Thank you, John, for that input. <clears throat> Basically, yeah, so flights increased by two times the, the old cost. D. Sandy, I drove to Thai Mung and almost swung to take a look, but didn't. Well, you're welcome to. Uh, knock on the door. It's a big blue door. If I'm here and I've got time, I'll certainly say hello. Uh, but, um, yeah, thank you for dropping in. I hope you enjoyed your visit to the area. Buy you Tom on the loose again said, uh, this is not even mentoring areas, uh, mentioning areas cleared for the many new BTS lines. Again, well, this is some sort of transition or change. Uh, I think there's plenty of old Bangkok you can still find in old other parts of Thailand. I don't think I've noticed a lot of stuff, well, not, not any more stuff being mowed down than uh, usual in the past, making way for new condos and, you know, things like public transport. Antoine asked the question, Tim, is any action taken to address the burning season and extremely bad air quality as a result of? Uh, well, yeah, interesting that, uh, yet to see. The burning season really doesn't start until, well, probably the start of next year, January, well, late December until May. Uh, at the moment, I don't think we're gonna see a big change this year. It's not as if the government has told farmers they can't burn off or anything like that. There has been some transnational meetings with uh, some of the surrounding ASEAN countries about the same issue. So something is being done. I don't think it's going to have a huge impact this year. And last year was by far the worst air quality for the longest period that we've had. And I'm not sure if we're going to see any change this year. How the government will react to it on a day-to-day -day media cycle basis will be interesting, but um, it's yet to come. We can't really comment on it at this time because it hasn't really started. Uh, Re Reid says, uh, also less flights domestically in Thailand. Really? I, okay. Uh, from Phuket, there seems to be, well, the same number of flights, well, roughly, that we had pre-COVID, but uh, please share the, uh, the locations which you feel where the number of flights have dropped. Uh, interested to hear your comment. Question from Antoine uh, is any, I've read that one. And uh, by you, Tom, on the loose again, uh, followed up by saying the lack of flight numbers worldwide is really hurting more than just Thai tourism. Yeah, I mean, world tourism is suffering from the lack of flights as uh, airlines are struggling to get their planes back in the air. Uh, very expensive, a plane that's been sitting on the ground for a couple of years to juice it up and uh, find the keys and get it all dusted off and get it back in the sky. So um, 
I think it's a problem for airlines around the world. Tim, what happened to the hotel? Thailand John asks. Are we running smoothly? Yes. Uh, well, as I've said a thousand times, we pivoted from the Marigold Hotel project, which hit a number of hurdles involving the lease and the owner, uh, which I wasn't able to resolve. So um, I moved away from that project. I will go into further details in a video at some stage. I'm just letting a bit of time happen between uh, that happening and uh, and now. But I've pivoted very quickly and quite spontaneously to now having two beach houses uh, right on the beach at, or not on the beach, but over the road from the beach at Thai Mung, which is just north of Phuket. I've moved up here. I'm living in one of the beach houses, li- uh, renting out the other one next door. It's uh, for short-term rental. Very nicely done. Uh, there's a link in the description of this video if you'd like to have a look at what it looks like. If you even like to come and stay for a few days or a week, uh, it is available for rental. We've got about seven or eight uh, bookings coming up. But uh, yeah, there's plenty of dates still available, so you can have a look at that. But I've also just signed the lease on a third beach house property, which I'm also going to renovate. Uh, as to whether I'll move into that and rent these two or stay in this one and rent number one and number three, yet to decide, but we'll decide on that soon. Udon Tani to Utupau, no direct flight, says Thailand John. Uh, okay, fair point. So thank you very much to that. I think Utupau generally is underused and uh, seems to have a lot of challenges of people introducing flights into there. Uh, shouldn't. Uh, D Sandy says 60 to 80 in Phuket. I'm not sure what that's answering. Flights a day? Anyway. Uh, Senny Ann says married for the sake of 400,000 baht. Oh, okay. So we're talking about visas there in the background. Not talking about visas generally today, although, of course, you're welcome to bring up any topics you like. Uh, a much more befitting and sedate shirt, Tim. Well selected. Wait till you see what I'm wearing tomorrow on Grumpy Old Men. Let's move into um, our next area of evolution here in time that I think is quite noticeable and profound, and I'm pointing to the military. Now, there was a coup back in 2014, and we had a military-inspired, military-backed, pretty much, uh, well, a lot of generals and former generals in that army, including the prime minister himself. I'm going to shake the table by leaning on it. But I think there has been some changes, changes in the mood of the electorate, changes in the leadership of the army itself. And it seems to me that there is a general tone of uh, conciliation. Now, the current army chief uh, has downplayed the idea of any coups in the future four times publicly now. And when I see him talking, I just get the feeling that he actually means what he's saying. I also think uh, that 10 years down the track, there's a big change in the Thai electorate, the voting public, a lot more younger people voting who are into progressive changes, into democracy, uh, democracy style of government. And I really get the feeling, given the uh, the surge of protests in 2020, that if there was another coup, it would be, unfortunately, a bloodbath. It wouldn't be as calm and peaceful, uh, our transition as back in May 2014. I just get the feeling that there is a lot less mood for any military coup in the future, given at the moment uh, the current government has got uh, the conservative and the progressive side of politics all working together in a coalition. Maybe it's a honeymoon, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people saying, oh, you're not looking at the history, Tim. You're not looking at the way things happened in the past. But I think there has been a sea change in regards to uh, the way that the military are going to work in the future. And the fact that they've had one of their decisions to buy a submarine changed to a frigate, and that decision's been made by the government, seems to suggest to me that the government's running the country at the moment and not the military. So there's just a whole lot of uh, undercurrents to suggest to me that I think we're looking at a 
a real change in the role of the, the army in Thailand and also the other armed forces, uh, and even the, uh, this current government who has promised to get rid of conscription. I mean, that is a really big change to the way the military interfaces with uh, life in Thailand. Again, interested in your comments. Uh, any idea what the speed limit is? The speed signs seem, seem to be just a suggestion. The comfortable safe speed seems to be 130 to 140 kilometres. Okay, I'm not sure where you're talking about. If you're talking about in Thailand, sort of uh, out in uh, Udon Whoop Whoop, or even on the way to Thai Mung, yeah, the speed signs seem to be more of a suggestion than something that's heavily enforced. There's been promises of radars and more enforcement. I haven't seen that. I, touch wood, have never received a, a speeding ticket. I could have. I suppose, uh, to be honest, I speed almost on a daily basis. Uh, not on the motorbike, but uh, in the car. Yeah, everybody drives uh, a lot faster than the speed limits might suggest. Uh, does power of attorney exist in Thailand? Yes. Uh, are you able to let someone else manage your affairs if you become mentally impaired? Uh, the answer is yes, Graham. But I would suggest that you get a, um, a good lawyer on your side. If you're a foreigner and given your name, you probably are. Uh, in regards to power of attorney, might be good getting the consultation from an English speaking or a foreign lawyer. Uh, someone like uh, Ben Hart from Integrity Legal would be a good start, but there's plenty of other good English speaking lawyers around. But yes, there is power of attorney in Thailand. Brett Border, we all missed the Marigold project. I even had Marigold seeds ready to send. Brett, that's very kind of you. But uh, be assured that where I am now, I'm happier, much less stressed. This project is much more manageable and much less risky. Uh, even though I was prepared to go ahead with the Marigold project because the, uh, the owners were moving the goalposts, it uh, just made it too difficult to go ahead with. Plenty of American Boeing C-17s coming and going from Utapau recently. Well, it is a military airport. The ground staff missing for drinks last evening. Uh, from Bangkok to Phuket is around $30 to $60 one way, says D. Sandy. You can get uh, prices from, well, 800 baht up to 3,000. Uh, you need to get in quick or early to get those cheap flights, but uh, they are there if you want them. John's Journey question, do they have speed cameras in Thailand? Well, apparently they do. I see them from time to time and uh, I can... If they're not speed cameras, maybe they're just uh, surveillance cameras. I figure they're speed cameras. But we're told they have speed cameras. I don't seem to be getting anything in the mail. May friends, many friends now have had tickets up to the northeast with speed cameras, says John. Maybe okay going around towns, but the big roads are stricter now. Uh, fines through the post. The last speeding fine I got was uh, in Australia last October I got a speeding fine for doing 45 in a 40 zone I think I could walk faster than that in inner Sydney uh, anyway I haven't noted uh, any enforcement in speeding fines uh, at the moment I haven't heard or read about it in the forums uh, but uh, John suggests otherwise thank you uh, okay, Richard says, uh, would, be, would be nice to think you are correct on no more military intervention, but let's see how it goes if any government tries to touch 112. Again, compromise. <clears throat> there was compromise in the selection of a prime minister and compromise <clears throat> in uh, things like section 112 of the, uh, the um, criminal code, which is the Les Majeste laws. Uh, and I also think just uh, an observation and noting that uh, Peter Limjolonrat has been in New York over the past week as part of the Time 100 most prominent foreign people or most influential people list. Uh, and he's saying he's you know, getting ready to come back to Thailand and getting stuck into uh, returning to politics. And I would say that uh, his failure to become prime minister 
will end up being, in the long term, probably the best thing that happened to him. He, I think, got a lot of experience out of that. I think he accumulated some wisdom, uh, a bit more uh, demeanour by uh, the way that you need to work with other ties in the political sphere. Uh, I think uh, he would have benefited from that particular defeat and uh, it'll make him a better politician in the future. And I think the Move Forward Party will approach things a little bit more delicately whilst uh, still being keen and still being, I think, widely popular here in Thailand. And to Daryl McGee, thank you very much, Daryl, all the way from Australia. Uh, appreciate your support of the program. He says, a transition I've noticed is that the village, the children would ride push scooters or bicycles, now electric scooters and bikes. Keep up the good work. Yes, certainly uh, around here, we've got a, a university campus down the road and uh, every morning about 7.30 and then every afternoon at 3.30, that way at 7.30, this way at 3.30, they uh, whip past and all their motor scooters and uh, not many people riding on elephants or on push scooters anymore. They're all on their, uh, their, I mean, their motorbikes are so cheap these days. Uh, so yeah, that is a transition. Let's go on to the next one here and that's the weather. Uh, have I got the uh, the weather thing here? Okay, this is one. So let's have a talk about transitions in the weather. And uh, I go to this map, and I've circled uh, basically the provinces of Krabi, Phuket, and Panga, where I've lived for some 12 years. And during the uh, period from May until December, reliably every year, Less so in the last couple of years, we've had what's called the Southwest Monsoon, the wet season. And it's called the Southwest Monsoon because guess what? The wind direction changes around to the southwest and it is so reliable that doing the weather forecast every day, uh, 10 to 15 knots, maybe up to 20, 25 knots some days from the southwest, day after day after day. This year, that has not been the case. In fact, I could count on one hand the number of days that the wind has come from the southwest. Now, I do a daily weather report for a, a local media site, a publication, and I know the, where the weather's been coming from. So I go to, uh, to this map, and in red I show where the wind has been coming from for almost the entire wet season and uh, that red circle being roughly where I live in Tai Mung here at Turtle Beach. The yellow arrow shows where the wind should be coming from, that is uh, the southwest. So there has been a really big change. Now, how has that uh, manifest itself generally with the weather? Oh, the wind is coming from a different direction. What does that mean? Well, the amount of rainfall for this area is down 50 to 70%, depending on where you are. Um, we're not getting all that moisture coming in from the Indian Ocean. Uh, we're getting a lot less moisture and a lot less humidity coming in from these northwesterly winds. And I'm looking out today and the northwesterly is still light, but uh, it is prevailing today. So that's what I've noticed in regards to uh, locally. Phuket, I'm sure when I, I checked the figures at the end of this month, uh, I checked a few months ago, it's had a lot less a moisture a lot less rainfall than usual so the rainfall way down this year and I'm thinking we're going to see that pattern right around Thailand where there's been a lot less rain this year yes there has been some localized floods but a lot less than in the past uh, and that also leads to the fact that uh, as we know this isn't a weather thing so much but just a general climate change issue that Bangkok is sinking and it's sinking by about 1.2 centimetres per year. And uh, the waterline will slowly creep further inland by about 1.3 kilometres every year. So over the next 20 years, and it's happened already, there are parts of Bangkok that used to be dry that are now getting a lot of moisture. Thank you very much for that noise. Uh, inundating the city. 
and talks about uh, moving some of the parts of Bangkok inland to areas uh, just north of the Sawanapum Airport, for example, which is called Lat Krabang. So they've uh, sort of designated parts of that area north of the airport as an area where they might build a new uh, sort of CBD for Bangkok. So this is going to be a big issue (coughs) over the next uh, 10 to 20 years. Uh, Bangkok pretty much built on a muddy delta anyway, slowly sinking into the sea. And uh, (coughs) whilst I'm here, a big thank you to Scott D. Thank you, Scott, of course, for your ongoing generosity and support of the program saying hello from chicago but it's cooler in chicago than it is here today and uh, just scrolling down frank in thailand also been very kind uh, <clears throat> and uh, for your future speeding ticket frank if i ever get one it probably won't cost much more than that but um, i'm hoping not to rack them up and certainly if i get one uh, it'll <laughs> modify the way that i might drive in some areas but uh, i mean i do drive carefully but once you're on uh, some of these the roads around here are really excellent a very high quality and uh, I feel that I can yeah travel at the speed I sometimes travel at uh, well it's rained almost every day here in Phuket since July says D Sandy uh, well that's incorrect I do the weather report every day I publish the radar pictures uh, and w- whilst it may have rained quite often <clears throat> the rain is usually very, very localised. So, uh, D. Sandy, I, I got the details and the figures and the statistics to suggest that you, you might be wrong in that particular assumption. Grunt Max, a New South Welshman. Keep tabs on your e-toll account. I just got charged $8 for driving on a Sydney expressway when I've been back in Phuket since the Australian government C-19 travel restrictions were lifted. Okay. Uh, Yeah, I hired a car. It was a little um, hybrid uh, Toyota. Great little car. And, uh, yeah, I drove all the way from Melbourne along the beach road, uh, Highway Number 1 up to Sydney. Really great trip. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, the... It kept on telling me when I was going over the speed limit. Plus, there were a lot more speed limit signs all along the way, but uh, somehow, either through Google Maps or some camera reading the speed uh, signs, it was kept on warning me when I was over the speed limit. So it's much harder and much more expensive to speed in Australia these days. The ground's always more moist or damp due to the high humidity here, says D. Sandy. Yep, that's uh, quite true. Brett Drinkwater, which airport would one fly into from Bangkok for a Turtle Beach stay? Uh, That would be Phuket. And uh, if you stay here more than three days, I'll come and pick you up at the airport, probably in the blue Mercedes. That's a promise we've made to our our Airbnb customers. So, uh, yeah, it's about a half-hour drive from the Phuket airport to uh, the front door here at Turtle Beach. Uh, They are talking about building a new airport here, but uh, I'm not sort of going to get too excited about that until they start turning some dirt, even though the land has been uh, expropriated. Uh, They're talking about perhaps four, five, six, seven years before that eventuates. Static cameras here find the car plate, not the driver. You need to be stopped to have your license docked points, says Senny Ans. Yeah, I mean, the speed cameras do read the uh, the number plate and they send uh, the owner of the car a, a nice pretty picture of your car. Uh, when does the unelected Senate get disbanded and what takes its place, says Tom Orr. Look, my understanding is that uh, they get disbanded in March next year and that there will be either a partial or a full election of new senators. Now, I haven't seen anything to say that that's not the case, uh, but that's my understanding that there will be uh, either a partial or full election of senators in March next year. That will profoundly change uh, the sort of colour of the parliament Uh, John Swift, again, the low rain and moisture may cause bigger problems with forest fires. Well, yes, certainly up in drier parts of Thailand, uh, like the north and northeast. 
uh, with the, a lot of the fires <coughs> that do start each year, it could be more of a problem. Uh, let's hope you're wrong, John. And uh, MotoGP this weekend in Buriram. Thank you for rem- reminding me, Don. And it uh, should be televised on Channel 36 for anybody that's got a channel. I dare say it's probably covered on the internet somewhere as well. Um, okay. American Talk Live. Tim, when can I get that golden... Where can I get that golden bowl? Oh, this one. I bought that uh, when I was in Ho Chi Minh City about two years ago. And it's uh, some of that lacquerware. And I bought it in a market, a very well-known market that I can't remember the name of, in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, so, yeah, it's a bit of a favourite. And it's, uh, it's a plate. Uh, it's a very shallow plate. It's not actually a bowl. So, uh, yeah, I, I love it. And I uh, got that in Ho Chi Minh City. Grunt Max. Many illegal speed fines issued in Australia due to... Oh, I'm not here to talk about Australia. What else have we got to talk about? I was going to talk about... Um, Social changes. So, gee, they've been uh, quite prominent in the the past week in uh, the political life here in Thailand. Proposed changes uh, and a a new, what do you call it, um, resolution heading to Parliament in the next couple of weeks to change the Marriage Act and also uh, to change the laws pertaining to sex workers in Thailand. And both those will make big changes Uh, allowing same-sex marriage, for example, and giving rights and uh, full insurance and hospital benefits, for example, health benefits to uh, to sex workers in Thailand. Uh, Just legislating that completely, well, mostly unregulated industry. I think it will have a good effect on at least the sex workers. As to how that's going to hit the ground, uh, the effect on the customers, uh, I don't know as yet. Um, also, casinos. Uh, I just read this one during the week. How do I go here? Excuse me, as I just race through, uh, pressing this button. Here we go. Uh, that was a good story. I'll get to that. Um, so, yeah, the Bangkok Post today. The House of Representatives has set up a 60-member committee to study the potential opening of entertainment complexes, including casinos, to address the problem of illegal casinos and boost the country's economy, as proposed in a motion submitted by MPs. Now, it says that the MPs that supported this were from the Pertai Party, the Move Forward Party in opposition, and a UTN party, uh, party list MP. So you've got three different factions of progressives, centralists, and uh, the, the old guard there supporting this particular resolution. Moving on, the motion calling for the formation of a committee to examine the matter underwent deliberation in a House meeting chaired by the House Speaker. And during the debate, many MPs voiced their support for the motion. So I think you can sort of read between the lines here and see that there is a bit of a sea change again towards the attitude of uh, the Thai government towards casinos. Looks like something may be in the wind and we look forward to hearing some sort of report maybe later this year from that particular committee. Just going to stand up for a little while, getting a bit sore there. Uh, and um, blah, 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 blah. yes, so there has been quite a lot of these, uh, these I think, quite profound changes to uh, social changes in Thai society. This story I thought was very interesting, apropos of absolutely nothing. Phuket SWAT team arrest foreigners after a four-hour siege at a luxury villa. I'll have to sit down, I can't stand up. And, uh, yeah, they look pretty deadly serious there. What was going on? Phuket police have arrested an Indian national and a number of other foreigners uh, following a four-hour siege at a luxury villa in Cheung Talay. The standoff eventually ended when the provincial special well, the SWAT team stormed the ground. Understood two Phuket immigration officers were assaulted by security men stationed at the property. Uh, just sort of moving on there. Uh, the SWAT team entered. They found nearly 20 cars and an ambulance in the grounds. Uh, they found over 30 drones and a number, number of wild animals, including wildcats, pythons and Marco parrots. According to the report, the villa was being rented by an Indian national and his Ukrainian wife, who had been there for around three months. 
The property is on 10 rye of land and valued around 500 million baht. <laughs> I found that particularly interesting, the whole SWAT team going in. I think the Indian man had been overstaying his visa. And another story that I found uh, of interest here, um, and this is an update to a story we did yesterday from Thai PBS World. The PM reiterates that 18, not 54 Thais being held by Hamas, and the Prime Minister refuted a report yesterday which claimed that 54 Thai nationals are among the 220 hostages. He said, I've checked and verified the situation with our Thai ambassador in Israel, as well as with security agencies, they've confirmed that 18 Thais are being held. And this uh, original story of 54 being held hostage was originally reported in Reuters. But it looks like uh, that's not the case. So I thought that uh, just might be an interesting uh, update. So we'll finish today with uh, your comments. And uh, okay, let's see what we've got here. And thank you, by the way, to all those people that have uh, supported the channel. I really appreciate it. Uh, more than you can imagine. Uh, helping me on with my new life up here, just north of Phuket. Uh, cha 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 says generals frequently backpedal between coups. They'll be back just as surely as the Shins and the police faction all of the Shinawath also consistently interfering in local politics. See, change my foot. Well, cha-cha-cha, I think you're wrong. Uh, I'm a pretty good judge of people, and I've been watching these people saying that there will not be another coup. And they just seem to be saying it from the heart and saying it in such a way, without the sort of wry smile of a Prayut Chanocha, uh, and just looking at the way that the army's been working with this new government, they seem to be working like a military under a government rather than the other way around. And look, at some, some stage, there will be uh, some sort of evolution away from all those years of turmoil between the red shirts and the yellow shirts and the, the frequent coups. There will be a move away from that. Uh, will it become anything like Myanmar? Never. Uh, so people try and compare the coups in Thailand and the coups in Myanmar to very, very different animals. Remembering that when Prayut chan took over, he wrote a song called Bringing Happiness Back to the Thai People. A very, very Thai coup indeed. Uh, Grunt Max, many illegal speed finds. Oh, I think we've already done that one. Uh, just trying to see if I've missed anything major here. Tim, maybe it's time to stop encouraging all that international travel to your beach house, or are you another concerned hypocrite? Uh, says John. Uh, look, actually, I, I don't think I'm encouraging a lot of international travel to the beach house. Uh, in fact, Steve and I both go out of our way to try and warn people as to what they're going to find here at Turtle Beach. We say that there's uh, no pubs, uh, there's no shopping centres, uh, there's very little to do here. It's a place that you come and relax, a place you come and sit on the beach, you come and read a book, you uh, can come and sit in the very nice backyard at my beach house. But uh, yeah, we go out of our way. In my description uh, for the beach house, as well as every time Steve and I talk about this on YouTube, we try and go out of our way to make sure you understand that if you want to come here, by all means. But uh, unless you've got a bike and you like riding on a five kilometer long, flat, straight road, there's not much to do here except eat and relax and go and sit on the beach. I, mind you, I've been swimming every day for the past week on the beach and uh, enjoyed it thoroughly. But I don't think we're going out of our way to encourage international tourists at the same time, it would be stupid if we didn't share what we thought about this particular area and uh, brought a bit of the lifestyle to you. Thank you, John, for calling me a hypocrite. When does the NLX... OK, we've done that. Let's go to, uh, say, three more comments and we'll finish today. Uh, blacklisted by banks. 95% uh, of Thai households are in some kind of debt. Seriously bad, as it's almost equal to Thai GDP. 
Uh, yes, look, I think that is a concern, not quite as bad as you make out there, but it was acknowledged by the Prime Minister to be an issue that they do want to address and that they are aware of. Uh, makes sense to me. Is there a Pizza Hut? No, there's definitely not a Pizza Hut. Uh, there's no KFC. There's no McDonald's. Uh, there's three convenience stores, a small supermarket. Uh, there's plenty of really good Thai food, uh, but there's very little foreign or farang food in the area. Very little. So, yeah, I mean, this is just a little Thai town that most people drive straight past on their way from Phuket to Khao Lak or up to Ranong. Um, is there more property scam in Phuket now compared to before COVID-19? Actually, I think there's a bit less. Uh, the government have certainly come down and uh, I think a lot of those dodgy developers have uh, moved on. Gee, we used to report on that a lot in the past, less so currently. There have been a lot of property sales there, but I think there's um, I, I think they've really improved on the legality of, of a lot of those scams in the past. Good question. Many countries' debt is multiples of the GDP. That's absolutely true, but Thailand, unfortunately, is up there. Tim, do you serve dinner for your guests? No. Uh, we're looking at maybe doing breakfasts, but I'm not the sort of person who's going to be cooking. Usually at that time of the day, I'm doing my daily TNT program, uh, looking at providing a breakfast because there's only one place that really does a foreign breakfast in the area. And they open at 7.30 and it's perfectly good. But um, yeah, we, we look at maybe doing uh, breakfast, but certainly not dinner. There's some great places for dinner here, including one listed in the Michelin Panga Food Guide. There's a nice little meat market, fresh market. Yes, there's a great uh, fresh food market in town. Can't remember when it's open though. It's only open like two or three days a week. A good drag strip out the front. Yeah, it's um, five to 10 kilometers of lot. Well, five kilometers to the national park. Then I think it goes for another five or 10 kilometers past that. A long, straight, flat road with a bike track on the side which is often used by motorbikes, of course. Any live lobster? Haven't seen a lot of lobsters around here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's lobster season, but um, uh, looking over the road, there are some lobster nets. So I think maybe at some time of the year, they'll be taking them out and uh, maybe we will have some, um, some crayfish or lobsters for, for dinner. SUV or new pickup cars? Uh, okay, I missed uh, what that's about. Uh, some good Texas chili would be easier to make. Tim, would you consider doing a series on the history of Thailand? Your knowledge is best in class. A lot of people doing that already. People like Bangkok Pat, who are much more knowledgeable than me. <clears throat> I am thinking about doing some, uh, some new either channels or programs, but uh, I'm sort of getting my feet under the table at the moment. I've only been in Thai Mung for four weeks. So just getting used to running uh, the businesses here, um, getting used to just doing my daily programs. Uh, so yeah, not, not quite ready to do anything new at the moment, but thank you for the suggestion. Uh, question from Wilco. Did you ever work with Rod McNeil, who worked on Melbourne ABC Radio and has lived and worked in Bangkok in the media for many years, uh, would be in his mid-70s now? No, I never worked with Rod, uh, well aware of his work. Not so much in Melbourne on the ABC, but when he was working with, um, they were called Thai Visa at the time, they used to do a daily news show, uh, but they stopped doing that at one stage and uh, not sure what Rod's doing now, but uh, never met him, but well aware of his, uh, his work and his lovely voice. How far are you away from scuba diving companies? Oh, Seaside Freddy, I've not seen one operating anywhere around here. I dare say they might operate in Cowlack, but there's certainly no scuba diving companies here on uh, Turtle Beach. Banks are pretty good now. You can never take out more than you put in, so banks are safe. Okay, good point. Frank in Thailand, I believe I 
1,000 baht for this document a few years back to get a new bank account. Okay, gambling is also a major drain on household finances, whether it's uh, legal or illegal. And uh, whether they have these legal casinos or not, there will still be plenty of underground casinos. Ties do enjoy their gambling, if not just for the twice a month uh, lottery. Something, again, we talk about on Grumpy Old Men tomorrow with Steve. Uh, any mantis prawns? I'm a foodie. I don't know. They do catch lots of prawns here, which are sold to the local uh, seaside restaurants. But uh, I don't know the breed of prawns, but some of them are, well, I suppose I'd call them king prawns anyway, and they're very tasty. Is Thailand planning to open a casino in Bangkok or Phuket? Well, they're saying in some of the more prominent tourist areas, so I think that would involve north of Thailand, uh, Bangkok, Phuket, Pattaya, maybe some of the border areas to try and stop Thais crossing over the borders for some of those illegal casinos operating in those border towns. Uh, my bank letter from immigration was 500... Um, okay, I think that's about it. Bangkok is great. Bangkok Pat is great, says Chairman Moas. Moas? Okay, sorry. Been great having you with us for the past hour and 13 minutes. Good heavens. I've got things to do and I bet you have as well. It's a sunny day here. I've got to go out and do some, uh, sh I've got to go and do some food shopping. So we're going to the the big smoke. We're going to Cockloy about 10 minutes down the road where they've got a bigger Tesco. Oh, it's not called Tesco anymore. It's called Lotus's. But I'll be buying up there and uh, getting some food that I can't get here locally, probably in Phuket early next week. We've got grumpy old men tomorrow. Then, of course, we've got our daily show again on Monday. Comes out roughly 9 o'clock in the morning. Good luck to all the competitors at the MotoGP on the weekend and all those people that enjoy MotoGP racing. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Do I have anything else I'm meant to say? People want to know where I get my shirts. I'll try and find a listing, to a link to the uh, Lazada channel that I use. Uh, might take me five or ten minutes to find the channel. Anyway, uh, I am getting a few new shirts at the moment. And uh, some people really love commenting about that. Have a fantastic weekend, a fantastic rest of your Saturday. Really appreciate your support, uh, whether financially or just joining us on our Saturday morning chats. Hopefully you're a bit more up to date with things happening around Thailand and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.